It's time for another virtual tour of all that's remarkable about archaeology. We might even throw in a discovery or two from the field of paleontology just for good measure. There's no hard or fast rule about what makes for an incredible find. We simply keep our eyes open for fascinating discoveries that have equally fascinating stories behind them. And then we bring them to you in videos like this one. Let's go. Heilongtan Castle in China made history in 2015 when it became the first designated World Cultural Heritage Site in the country's Gizhou province. Archaeologists say that the castle is the largest, oldest, and best preserved of all the Tusi settlements in China. Over the many years it was in use, it served as a military citadel, a temporary imperial palace, and government offices. Historical records indicate that work on the castle was completed in the year 1257, which makes it a product of the Southern Song Dynasty. It remained in use until at least the start of the 17th century, and perhaps even a little longer than that. The extensive facilities within the castle during its peak years would have included administration offices, multiple living quarters, several water wells, and handicraft factories. Its primary purpose was military defense, but it also contained leisure facilities for people who called it home. Most of the wooden structures inside the castle were destroyed by fire during the Pingo Battle in the year 1600, but the stone walls remained standing. The theory that the dinosaurs were wiped out by an enormous meteor impact is increasingly becoming accepted as fact, and that process is helped along by discoveries like this one. It's a massive pile of fossilized fish layered on top of each other. Scientists believe that they were deposited here 65 million years ago in the aftermath of the impact of the meteor that killed the dinosaurs. The sea that the fish lived in would have turned into a 30-foot tall wave when the meteor hit, tossing the sturgeon and paddlefish onto a sandbar and stranding them there to be pelted by glass beads raining down from the sky. Around 20 minutes later, a second wave hit, covering the fish in sediment and gravel and condemning them to fossilization. The fish and the dinosaurs weren't the only victims of the impact. Some scientists estimate that the disaster wiped out around 75% of the life that existed on Earth at the time. Nowhere else in the world have scientists found evidence of so many creatures that died on the same day at the same time. We're heading back to China now to take a closer look at a tomb discovery from 2011. It's the plainly named Tomb 13 at Han Dynasty Cemetery Complex in Shanxi Province, and the only tomb in the entire complex that was discovered to be full of bamboo containers. Experts believe that the containers were probably full of delicacies and desserts when the tomb's occupant was buried, suggesting that whoever they were, they may have been known for their sweet tooth. Proving who was buried here will most likely never be possible, but the most likely candidate is a daughter-in-law of a high-ranking Western Han Dynasty official, Zhang Anshi, who died a little over 2100 years ago. The entire tomb complex was built for Zhang and his extended family. The tombs are thought to have been designed to reflect the lives of the people buried in them, so when the time came to bury this woman, she presumably went to her resting place with all her favorite meals. Archaeologists also found a wooden lacquer box inside the tomb, but thus far they haven't been able to open it and aren't sure what it contains. You'll have to excuse this whale for not looking its best. It's been dead for 5,000 years, so we think it has a reasonable excuse. The massive whale skeleton was discovered in Thailand in late 2020, close to Bangkok, and just over 7 miles away from the coast. The skeleton is 40 feet long and almost perfectly preserved. Its excellent state of preservation has allowed experts to identify it as a bride's whale. The species still exists in the waters around Thailand today, but is considered endangered and is an officially protected species. The fact that the skeleton was found such a long way from the coast is evidence of significant changes to the sea level in the Gulf of Thailand during the past 5,000 years. It seems the sea once came much further inland than it does now. 
Scientists hope that the whale discovery will provide them with fresh insight into the cause of the change in the sea levels and better their understanding of bride's whales. From studying the deposits around the whale, they may be able to reconstruct the biological communities that existed at the time and compare them to the biological communities of today. We love an archaeological site that has a literal name, so let's check out Riding on Stone Provincial Park in Alberta, Canada. As you might expect from the name, the park is full of First Nations rock art, including paintings and inscriptions that some have interpreted as writing, although that interpretation is controversial. The inscriptions are certain to have symbolic meaning, but that alone doesn't qualify them as writing. The Blackfoot name for the park is Asenaipi, which translates as, it is pictured, and is probably a more accurate description. This is the largest concentration of pictographs and petroglyphs anywhere in North America. Archaeologists know that people have lived in the area for more than 3,000 years, but the earliest of the carvings here is far more recent. With an age of close to 700 years, although most of the work was created by the Blackfoot, the oldest are the work of the Shoshone. This appears to have been a spiritually important place for both tribes. The park is protected to ensure that the glyphs are preserved, which means that parts of it are off-limits to visitors, but the Hoodoo hiking trail remains open and allows tourists to see the best of the work so long as they don't mind a long walk and a bit of a climb. In October 2020, Spanish farmer Gonzalo Crespo was plowing his olive grove exactly the same way he's done it for years when his tractor collided with an object. He thought it was a large stone. But that illusion was quickly dispelled when he got out of the tractor to take a closer look. The object of Gonzalo's tractor hit was a 3,000-year-old sculpture of a lioness hunting its prey. Aside from some unfortunate damage to the nose caused by the impact of the tractor, the statue is in excellent condition and is now in the hands of the Archaeological Museum of Cordoba. This is an especially valuable find because, while there are documents that cover the history of this area during the Roman era, very few physical Roman era discoveries have ever been made here. In fact, Gonzalo's statue is already thought to be one of the most significant Roman era finds in the region's history. The symbolic meaning of the statue is unknown, and it might not have any symbolic meaning at all beyond suiting the artistic tastes of whoever commissioned and owned it. It most likely once stood on the grounds of a villa, although there's no signs of the villa in the surrounding land. Humans have enjoyed making and wearing jewelry and accessories since time immemorial. Our tastes in what constitutes stunning jewelry have changed somewhat during that time, but the best examples of the art form look beautiful in any era. As evidence of that, we present this 3,000-year-old gold jewelry that was discovered in a tomb in Cyprus in early December 2021. There were more than 500 artifacts inside the tomb complex, along with the remains of over 150 individuals. But nothing quite as remarkable as the jewelry. Such is its quality that archaeologists now think that the tombs may have belonged to the region's ruling elite. That theory is backed up by the fact that even young children were buried with valuable golden objects like a tiny tiara, necklace, and a pair of solid gold earrings found with the remains of a five-year-old. Elsewhere in the tombs, the experts found a ceramic bowl with openings at each end of its body, one to fill it with wine and the other to drink the wine from. This is evidence that feasts were held inside the tombs after they were finished as a way of honoring the dead. England's Chislehurst Caves are an unusual archaeological discovery because, although they're ancient, they're also still a work in progress. New carvings are added regularly, and probably always will be, so long as there are people around to add them. The caves run on for more than 22 miles and arguably ought to be called tunnels rather than caves, but it's too late to change their name now. They stretch beneath the suburbs of East London and have been there for thousands of years. How many thousands of years is a matter of some debate. Some historians say that they were created by the Saxons around 1500 years ago, but other historians say they could be anything up to 8,000 years old. 
both might be true. The most recent detailed study suggests that the core areas of the tunnels are around 6,000 years old, but the tunnels that stretch out from the core were added less than 2,000 years ago. There are some signs that the Romans might have carried out the expansion for unknown reasons, but not enough evidence to prove that. In the 20th century, the caverns even hosted performances by Jimi Hendrix, David Bowie, and the Rolling Stones. We're staying in England for our next discovery, but we're heading west from London to Wiltshire. Wiltshire is where you'll find the world-famous site of Stonehenge, but it's also where you'll find the West Kennet Long Barrow. This is one of the largest Neolithic tombs on the British Isles, so large, in fact, that visitors can walk all the way through it. Historians say that the Barrow Tomb was created somewhere around 5,600 years ago during the Neolithic era and remained in use for roughly 1,000 years. Around 50 people were buried here during that time. Some were cremated, but there are signs that others were left unburnt and then, for unknown reasons, occasionally removed and then reburied, which led to their bones becoming disarticulated. Archaeologists have also found stone tools, beads, and pottery within the tomb. The mound is covered in grass today, but when it was new, it would have been a bare chalk structure built into a larger chalk ridge. It's 10 feet tall, 300 feet long, and contains a 45-foot-long passage that connects the four internal burial chambers. Visitors, as we mentioned earlier, are welcome, but it's not a place for the claustrophobic. Could a mosaic floor in Edmond, Oklahoma rewrite the history of North America? There's only one way to find out, so let's look at it. The floor, which was discovered in 1969, is peppered with holes that have been interpreted by archaeologists as post holes, into which wooden beams would have once been inserted. It was originally found by construction workers, but it wasn't until professional archaeologists arrived at the scene that the mystery truly began. According to the evidence, this mosaic floor is close to 200,000 years old. That ought to be impossible. In fact, it's so impossible that some scientists refuse to acknowledge it. While they acknowledge that it looks like a mosaic floor, they insist that this is a natural formation. And we only see a mosaic pattern when we look at it because that's what they want to see. However, those same scientists are unable to explain how and why nature inserted perfect post holes in their natural rock formation. Human life as we currently acknowledge didn't exist 200,000 years ago. So if this structure is artificial, we'd love to know who made it. Millions of people enjoy crossword puzzles. But comparatively few of those people are aware that the history of creating crossword puzzles can be traced back thousands of years. Here's one from the ancient city of Smyrna. You'll find the ruins of the settlement within the boundaries of the modern Aegean city of Izmir in Turkey, where it appears on the wall of a 2,500-year-old basilica. Crossword appears to have been written about 500 years after the basilica was built, it contains Greek words that can be read left to right and top to bottom. It would technically be more correct to call it acrostic than a crossword, but it's effectively the same thing. Making sense of the crossword is difficult because it contains the names of people as well as seemingly random Greek words. But there are some who believe it contains encoded information used by early Christians to communicate with each other in secret. There would have been stalls obscuring the wall here 2,000 years ago, so the words would have been hidden. On the other hand, it's just as possible that the crossword was created for the same reason we create crosswords today, as a form of entertainment. There have been more archaeological discoveries made in Egypt within the past two years than there were in the previous 20. Here's another stunning find. It's a sun temple and it's been hidden from the world for the past four and a half thousand years. The temple was found beneath the ruins of another ancient temple, and there might yet prove to be another even older temple buried beneath it at this site in Abu Ghraib. It seems that the older temple was only around a century old when the Egyptians decided to build another one on top of it for unknown reasons. 
The 19th century archaeologists could and perhaps should have found the older temple at the time of the original discovery, but they mistook its mud bricks for a building phase of their discovery rather than a different building. There are historical sources that suggest that six sun temples were once built in this part of Egypt, but this is just the third to be found. Perhaps it'd be a good idea for archaeologists to go and look underneath the other previous discoveries to see if they're hiding in there. <laughs>